Alright, today we are looking at the bystanders from the Fantastic Four Cosmic Clash. We're looking at Yancey Gang and Yancey Pickpocket. In this set, there are six Yancey Gang and one Yancey Pickpocket. Okay, let's take a look. Yancey Pickpocket comes in at 20 points. It is a low-cost outwitter. Uh, out of the bystanders in the Cosmic Clash uh, starter set, this one would be the one I would be least likely to use on a team. Although I do see that if you want some outwit and you have the 20 points left to spend, then I could see where this guy could fit in on some teams. I could see where you would use him instead of Ape Batman. Uh, right now, Ape Batman is... A low point outwitter also that brings a little bit more to the table but if you're doing a modern team a Batman uh, once he rotates out this would be your option for that low point outwit next is Yancey gang out of the bystanders Doombot and Yancey gang are the ones I'll be probably using more I already have some ideas on team builds that include them Yancey gang has sidestep with five movement 10 attack with precision strike. The 16 on his defense, a one damage with empower. Again, he comes in at just 15 points. Yancey Gang has the underworld team ability, which gives him passenger one, but only to carry a character that shares a keyword. Passenger 2, but only to carry characters that share a keyword with this character and are lower points. Uh, with him coming in at 15 points, I don't think you'll find lower point characters that have that keyword. The uh, keyword that WizKids gave him is Brute. Uh, we're going to look at a good Brute character that I'll be teaming him up with to take advantage of that underworld. Uh, his sidestep and five movement also comes in handy for a tactic that I use on a bunch of different teams that I put together. Now, when you use an object, what I like to do is be able to equip that object back in my starting area to keep me protected. I don't like to move the character out to have to pick up the object or equip it the second turn. If possible, I like to do this all on the first turn and do it as far away from the opponent as possible. So a five movement sidestepper is what you need to be able to get that object and get it back to the person that's going to equip it. The way that would work is Yancey Yang is going to move one, two, three, four, picking up the object five. You can pick up an object or put an object down whenever you move. So Yancey Gang would be able to get here, and now he's holding Exospecs. He will sidestep one, two, and drop the Exospecs in this adjacent square. So now that Hulk is in the same square as the Exospecs, Yancey Gang would have gotten a token. Hulk then would take an action to equip the Exospecs. Now I know sometimes how objects interact with movement it can be confusing, especially to newer players, but sometimes even to uh, longtime players because things change over time. So let's read this out of the rule book real quick, just so you know how to reference things. So object pickup. Once per move, this character may either pick up one light object holding it or put down one held object in a square it moves through or is adjacent to. Now you'll notice it says once per move with a lowercase move, which means anytime they move. Doesn't have to be a move action. So that's what allows that Yancey gang, when he does his regular move action, he is moving so he can pick it up uh, in an adjacent square, which gives him a little bit longer reach, which is why you need a five movement and sidestep to be able to do this. 
Then when he sidesteps, that's also a move. He's moving, uh, not a move action. And then he's able to place it down again in an adjacent square. Now you have to get that object into the square of the character that you want to equip because when they equip, it has to be in their square. It's different than a pickup. Now again, for reference, here's the equip piece from the rule book. It's equip friendly. A friendly character in this square or holding this object has power. Equip this object. On equipment, it will show you up here what the stipulations are. So this Exospecs has equip any, and if it becomes unequipped, it drops. Different objects have different uh, stipulations on them, so you'll want to look and see. Also, it tells you what it is, and the color ring will tell you if it is uh, light or heavy, just like it does up top. Okay, let's take a look at how Yancey Gang can be used with Fast Forces Hulk to take advantage of their Empower and their Underworld team ability. Now, you'll remember we equipped Hulk with Exospecs. So he is going to choose uh, free, choose hypersonic speed. Remember his special trait is when he moves after resolutions, he can use quake at no cost. Okay, let's go over the setup for Yancey Gang first. They have the underworld, so they can carry each other since they share the brute keyword. They also share that with Hulk, so should they need to, they can carry Hulk. So we will start with this Yancey gang member. We're going to move five. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go right there. The Yancey gang member here is going to carry the other member next to him. When you carry, you minus your speed by one. So he's going to go four. One, two, three three, four, and we'll place the other member right there. Now this Yancey gang can sidestep carrying this one. We're going to sidestep two. Sidestep's free, so this guy can do it after he's been carried. We'll place him there. So we have one character out of these three that has used their sidestep. We have two that have been given an action to move. This guy has been carried, so he can't get any costed actions after he's been carried. Okay, but we set up our little empower box there. Now Hulk will hypersonic. Hypersonic speed is breakaway plus two. Power, half range. Improved movement with the two circles in the arrow. Passenger zero. Move, then make an attack. Then move up to your speed value minus the number of squares you just moved. So he, will, he has a movement of 10. He's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Make his attack from there. He has a 4 damage, and he'd be picking up the empower for five, six, seven. So a 12 attack for seven damage should he hit. He would then get his breakaway roll, uh, hopefully get it. And then he has three left, so he would move one and then two to put him right back into that square. Since he had two moves, he would activate two quakes at no cost one for each time he moved and after resolutions so now would be the time he'd quake single target on dark doctor doom picking up those three empowers and then quake again with three more empowers so that would be 7 14 21 potential damage as a reminder on quake what quake says is Close, knockback, make a close attack targeting all opposing characters. 
If more than one character is targeted, each hit character is dealt two damage instead of normal damage. Since we're doing single target, Hulk would be doing his normal damage and he'd be picking up the empower uh, adjustment from the three Yancey gang members around him. Now that's a ton of potential damage that Hulk could deal out once you team him up with the empower. Uh, even if you didn't do exospecs on him and you just moved him in, he would still be getting the free quake afterwards. So uh, seven, even without the exospecs on there. Afterwards, you will use the Yancey gang members that haven't sidestepped yet. I would use this one, sidestep two, carry in Hulk. So we're going to get Hulk out of there since he's our main guy. And we'll, you can sidestep and move zero squares just to be able to do that carry. And we'll place Hulk back here. Now Doom has this wall of characters, one of which is based. So he would have to deal with this before he could try to get the Hulk. Of course, that's assuming that Dr. Doom would still be standing after Hulk deals out that potential of 21 damage. So you can see at that 15 points, the Underworld ability and the Empower, plus that five movement sidestep, there's a lot of utility in the Yancey gang bystanders. Uh, in this scenario, you left this one tied up, so potentially you'd be losing 15 points. Then Hulk can move in there again and do the same thing next turn, picking up two Empowers. <laughs> Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed our look at these bystanders from the Cosmic Clash set. Overall, I'm impressed. I already am excited to try out at least a couple of these on some builds like I showed you today. I think they're going to get a lot of play in the competitive scene and in friendly games. So if you have some other ideas on how you're looking forward to using them, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again. Check it out. If you dig what we do, go ahead and like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.